surrounding the Golden Gate simply disappear. Phyllis, Phyllis, who makes the warning bells on the cable cars play the gangs all here. Phyllis, Phyllis, who charms the crabs on fishermen's wharf right out of their shells. Who lights the lamps of Chinatown just by walking in view. Mrs. Lindstrom. Oh, what a nice surprise. I hope we're not interrupting anything, but there's something I have to tell you. Oh, of course, Julie. This is Bess's boyfriend, Warren. Hello, Hello. Warren. <laughs> Bess and Warren have been going together for over two months now. <laughs> They're almost inseparable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't puppy love a marvelous thing, a many splendor thing? <laughs> so adorable. So innocent. Oh, what do you want to tell me, honey? Warren and I are going to have a baby. <laughs> huh? Relax, I'm only joking. <laughs> I just figured if I told you that first, it'd be less of a shock when I told you what I really have to tell you. Oh, I see. And what was that? We're getting married. <laughs> oh, getting married. <laughs> Isn't she marvelous? She has her father's warped sense of humor. <laughs> oh, I have some work to do. It was very nice meeting you, Warren. Now, what did you want to tell me? That's it. Warren and I are getting married. You... You, you can't be serious about this. We are, Phil. Well, Bess, don't you think you should take the time to consider all the practical aspects of marriage? I mean, you wouldn't move into a house without seeing all the rooms. You wouldn't buy a car without taking it for a spin. <laughs> Maybe I should rephrase that. Phyllis, I know this has been a shock to you, and you and I have a lot of talking to do. But we want to go tell Warren's parents the news, so is it okay if we discuss it later? Oh, all right. Good, I'll see you. I'll catch up to you later. Uh, Mrs. Lindstrom? Oh. I, I just want to tell you, I love your daughter, and I'm going to try to be a good husband to her. Thank you, Warren. I I'm sure you will. You're a very sweet boy. Gee, thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Little punk, I'll kill him. <laughs> Calm down. Bess and Warren can't get married without your consent. That's right. Right, the most they can possibly do is live together. Here yeah, for something sweet, Julie? Blueberry pie, caramel custard, me? <laughs> Nothing sounds very good. Just two iced coffees, Ernie. Why don't you go out with me, Julie, huh? You like to dance? No. Oh, that's too bad. I got a radio in my car. <laughs> I bet you don't even know how to turn that on. <laughs> Bess is only 17. What does she know about life? Remember Romeo and Juliet? Juliet was 13. What did she know? Well, she certainly spoke beautifully. <laughs> Why does Bess want to get married? What can he offer her that she can't have at home? <laughs> <laughs> that I would want to know about. Here we go. Are you sure I can offer you anything else? Like my heart? Sure, put it in a doggy bag. <laughs> Are Warren 
Robin's parents as upset about this as you are? I don't know. I never met them. No. Oh, maybe they're not too crazy about their son getting married either. Why don't you talk to them? Um, maybe together you could come up with something. Of course. That's a wonderful idea. Let's go. Ernie, I'm going to call them right now and invite them over to dinner tomorrow. Check, please. Oh, no check. My compliments. I'm buying. I'd rather you didn't. Call me crazy. I can't help it. I like beautiful women. It gives me such a warm glow all over when I can do something nice for lovely ladies. <laughs> That's very sweet. Yours comes to 380. <laughs> you kids wait until at least the fall to get married but that's so far away i know but it's a perfect time of year for someone like you and warren to go on a honeymoon the leaves are turning gold there's a little chill in the air and it's not too crowded at disneyland <laughs> i better check on the rose audrey are we ready to go just as soon as your mother finishes dressing dear oh phyllis I borrowed a pair of your earrings. I hope you don't mind. Oh, of course. Oh, they look beautiful on you. Oh, well, the ones that I would go with this are for pierced ears. It's been so long since I wore them, I couldn't get them on. Isn't it silly? You go to all that trouble to have your ears pierced, and then one day you wake up and find that those two little tiny holes have slammed shut on you. <laughs> kind of makes you wonder what life is all about. <laughs> Would you like an hors d'oeuvre while you're waiting? Where are you all going tonight? Oh, uh, Jonathan's club is having a guest lecture this evening. Oh. A gentleman who's just returned from a remote part of Russia where people live to be incredibly old. Huh. No, thank you, dear. Uh, something to do with their way of life. They drink goat's milk, eat goat cheese, and make their clothes out of goat hide. The average person lives to be 120 years old. The average goat dies young. <laughs> What's keeping mother? Oh, I hope I'm not inconveniencing you by having Warwick's parents over. No bother. She wanted to get out tonight anyway. Oh. Mother, you're not dressed yet. I'm not going. <laughs> I have to go out, but I don't want to. Come on, Mother. We're going out tonight, and we're going to have a very nice time. Come on, you. I don't want to hear any lecture about old people. If that's what I wanted, I could talk to myself. <laughs> All right, we won't go to the lecture, but we are going to a restaurant. Yeah. Phyllis is having company tonight, dear. I don't want to eat out. I want to eat here. <laughs> Mother Dexter, you're more than welcome to stay if you'd like. No, thanks, Phyllis. I've already made a reservation. <laughs> she didn't ask you. Mind your own business. <laughs> what are you having, dear? Roast beef. Like you made it the, the last week? Exactly. I'm going with them. <laughs> Book. I'll tell well, them. How the hell you get dressed? Uh, oh, oh, that is for your company, yes. Phyllis. Yes. We'll be right down, and dear, don't worry about Bess. She'll turn out just fine. I hope so. Warren. Uh, Hello, Mrs. Lindstrom. I'd like you to meet my parents. Uh, oh. <laughs> is a pleasure. Bess has talked about you so much. Oh. Isn't this a beautiful house? You're here. How great. Hi, Warren. Uh, Hi, Mr. Hollis. Hi, Bess. Let me take your coat. Thank Hi, Mrs. You. Hollis. Hello, dear. You've all met? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, Miss oh. <laughs> Are you enjoying San Francisco, Mrs. Lindstrom? <laughs> Quite a difference in climate from Minneapolis. <laughs> Would anyone like something to drink? Not just now, dear. Oh, I'll wait a little bit, too. Phil? <laughs> Phyllis, why don't you offer Mr. and Mrs. Hollis some more d'oeuvres? My, don't they look elegant? Phyllis, <laughs> more d'oeuvres. <laughs> Shrimp. <laughs> Thank you. 
for one moment, please. Bess, could I see you for a minute, dear? Bess, Warren's parents are... They're... I mean, she's... And he's... <laughs> they're nice, aren't they? They're adorable. Bess, why didn't you tell me they were midgets? And don't say you didn't think I'd notice. <laughs> not called midgets anymore. They're called little people. <laughs> Justifiably. <laughs> Bess, I'd always hoped that someday you would be married and that I would once again hear the pitter-patter of little feet, but I never realized that maybe someday they would be your mother and father. <laughs> Bess, why didn't you tell me? Because I thought if I told you, you might not want to meet them at all. And I knew that once you did meet them, you'd see what nice people they are and like them just as much as I do. His mother sounded so much taller on the phone. <laughs> I don't understand, Bess. How can Warren be so tall when they're so, so, so untall? <laughs> it happens. Lots of times, little people have regular-sized children. They do? Well, say, you and uh, Warren got married. What about your children? And more importantly, my grandchildren. Phil, as long as Warren is average height, our children probably will be too. Now, come on. They're waiting for us. Well, here we are again. Everything all right in here? Just fine. Wonderful, thank well, you. Well, our dinner will be ready in just a few minutes. Oh, would anyone like another... <laughs> one of these things? <laughs> Jonathan, I want you to meet Warren's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Hello, Hollis. Warren. Oh, how do you do? This is uh, Mrs. Dexter and Jonathan Dexter. Hello. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Oh, how, do you do? Oh, how nice to meet you. Warren, what lovely parents you have. Thank you. He looks just like you. <laughs> I want you to meet Warren's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis. Uh, uh, this is Mother Dexter. Uh, uh, Judge Dexter's mother. Yes, this is my mother. <laughs> How do Hello. You do? How do you do? You're very cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mother, I think we'd better be going now. They're very cute. Yes, uh, <laughs> we have a reservation, you know. Now, wait a minute, Jonathan. I have something I want to say to Mr. and Mrs. Hollis, and I'm not leaving until I've said it. <laughs> oh, you're very cute. <laughs> Especially you. Oh, I, I, I could just take you and cuddle and, and hug you. I, are you ticklish? Well, actually, no. A mother. Oh, I bet you are. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive my mother. She's very old and very weird. It was a horrible evening. I kept making these ghastly faux pas. After dinner, I asked Mr. Hollis if he'd like to stretch his legs. <laughs> well, I'm not sure they realize that you weren't being malicious, just dumb. I hope so. <laughs> The worst part of it is I didn't even get to talk about the wedding. I was afraid if I told them that I didn't want Bess and Warren to get married, they'd think it was because of them. And I couldn't bear the thought of hurting them. They were both so sweet, so nice, so teeny. Why don't you just be honest with them? Explain that you don't want Bess and Warren to get married because you think Bess is too young and that's the only reason that it has nothing to do with their size. Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Can you believe this? Just because I sent in my students' picture to that stupid contest with my name on it, they have the nerve to accuse me of plagiarism. <laughs> There's no decency left in the world anymore. What's with her? Oh, she's got a problem. What's the matter, Phyllis? Best wants to marry a boy whose parents are midgets. <laughs> Has she found one yet? <laughs> Leo, Bess has a boyfriend, and his parents 
parents are midgets. Well, then what's the problem? <laughs> well, the, the problem is that she's too young. How old do you have to be to marry a midget? She's not marrying a midget. Poor kid. She wanted to so badly. The, the boy is not a midget. His parents are. If Bess wants to marry a midget, she should hold out for the real thing. Well, let's give up. No, no. No, this, this has become a challenge. <laughs> Look here, Leo. Bess wants to marry a boy. I certainly hope so. A particular boy. She wants to marry someone named Warren. <laughs> listen, listen. It's going to be tough enough to find a midget, let alone one named Warren. Why doesn't she find the midget first and then see if maybe she can get him to change his name? This does not want to marry a midget. She did. I said she wanted to marry a normal-sized boy whose parents happen to be midgets. Oh, oh, oh. oh all right, okay. Ah. Ah. Has she been able to find one of those yet? So glad you could make it. Well, it was uh, very nice of you to invite us. There was something important I have to discuss with you. Um, well, let's see, I don't know quite where to start. Ah, uh, it's very difficult for me. Just say what's on your mind, dear. Uh, I wanted to say that I didn't think Bess and Warren should get married because they're so young. But I didn't tell you because I was afraid you'd think I didn't want them to get married because you were so... so... Short? Oh, that's all right. You can say it. We know we're short. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yes, we figured it out. <laughs> can I get you a drink? No, thanks. It's liable to stun our growth. <laughs> can joke about it. Well, other people do, so why shouldn't we? You know, we're not ashamed of the way we are. Of course, there are some drawbacks. Just once in my life, I'd like to hear somebody shout, down in front. <laughs> and it is annoying sometimes when people treat you like children. Oh, you mean like when they bend down to talk to you? No, when they pick you up to talk to you. <laughs> We're proud of our size. I mean, after all, who's to say whether we're too short or the rest of the world is too tall? So you see, Mrs. Lindstrom, you don't have to worry. I'm not at all sensitive about my height. Then why don't you let me wear high heels? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we talk about Bess and Warren? Oh, you see, Mrs. Lindstrom, we feel the same as you do. We believe they're both too young to be thinking of marriage. Oh, well then, what can we do about it? Well, uh, well, one thing we shouldn't do is forbid them to get married. I mean, it'll only make them do just what we don't want them to do. Uh, we have to prove to them that we're on their side. We have to let them know that whatever they do, we love them. And... Hopefully, they'll come to understand themselves that perhaps they should wait a while. That makes excellent sense. And if I may say something else, if in the next few years, Bess and Warren should still want to get married, I would be very proud to have her marry into your family. I mean that, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis. Well... Thank you, Mrs. Lindstrom. I don't think we have to be so uh, formal about it anymore. Adele, 
and Albert. A Bert for short. Bert for short. <laughs> That wasn't meant to be funny. I don't know what to do. Should I take the Hollis's very wise advice and let Bess make her own decision? Or should I listen to my own mother's heart and lock Bess in her room until she's 21? Don't worry about Bess. Why, she's decided uh, not to get married. What do you mean, Mother Dexter? Well, I, I talked to her out a bit. I told her that, that I myself had married when I was 16. And that I had four children by the time I was 25. And that I lost all my girlhood scrubbing floors, washing diapers, uh, taking in laundry, and, and living a life of complete drudgery. Mother, none of that ever happened to you. What difference does that make? <laughs> the kid bought it. You're watching ALN. Here's what's coming next.